Hi guys, welcome to Daddy and the Don. Today we're going to preview Brentford versus Watford. My guest today is Dougie. Hi Doug. Um, first question. Um, last time out against Leeds, how heartbreaking was that? It was a fantastic performance. It looked like it was going to be one of your best wins this season without Tony. And to have it snatched away like that, how was your feelings? I know you were there. Uh, and is this going to affect the team going forward or, or will the 24-hour rule um, make you feel better and, and just move on from it? Yeah, last Sunday against Leeds away, I really thought that um, we may have just held on at the end. But I, I, I think, to be fair to Leeds, that would have been a bit of a travesty because at half-time, we were quite fortunate to be only 1-0 down. Had it been 3-0 down, given the... <laughs> Uh, problems we had in actually travelling to the match with train cancellations and engin overrunning engineering works. If it had been 3 0, which possibly it could have been, I think um, I would have been out of the stadium on the, on the way home, or at least into the nearest pub to the Drama Soros. Having said that, um, without Ivan Tony up front, we battled hard in the second half. We Alvaro made a great save. Early on in the second half, we were header from a header from uh, Ailing, I think it was. And then from then on, we just built momentum and we turned the game completely around. Um, we certainly had other opportunities in that second half to have increased the, the lead even further. But at the end of the day, um, at, before the, the game, a two-all draw, I would have taken that all day long. Obviously, for last kick of the game, virtually, to concede a goal when you're two one up, you do feel that you, you're just going to hang on. But you know, I think the, the, the draw in the end was a fair result. So upcoming um, opponent is Watford. Um, I've seen a lot of Watford recently. They've had a lot of high profile games, um, and they play good football. They, I know they're missing Saar, which is a big loss, but they have some good players: Dennis, Josh King, um, Pedro looks solid, and they've got good players in that midfield. Um, so, you know, on the eye, people are thinking, oh, this should be a three points, but this is going to be a difficult game. Obviously, their defence is, is weak, and that's probably where you lot will need to exploit them. But is, is Watford going to be an easy game, or do you expect them to battle and, and, and make it hard for you lot and try and challenge for, well, try and get them three points just as much as you? And now looking forward uh, to Watford, I, I think uh, you're absolutely right. Watford's style of play at times is quite easy on the eye. It's lovely to watch. And they do go forward very, very quickly. And I think that this is the area that could cause us problems. If we can get to grip with their, their pace um, and turn things around, I think um, we could we could win. Uh, at, speaking now, it was Tuesday. If um, somebody was to say, will you take a, a draw? I'd probably say yes. Because you never know what, what for side are going to turn up. You know, albeit the uh, Everton when they went there, the uh, Everton were in the start of a, a bad run, and I think they came from uh, Watford came from behind and scored goals very late on, uh, and, and by the end of the match, Everton were completely overrun and Watford ran out very comfortable five two winners. So as long as <laughs> they don't turn up with their A game, maybe we we'll, we hopefully we'll be all right. So obviously Ivan Tony uh, missed the last game of COVID. Very unlikely he's playing this game. Um, I don't know if he's officially ruled out, but I'm pretty certain he probably will be. So without him not playing, um, how big of a loss is that? Um, he's a talisman. Um, but can the boys rally and, and, and like they did against Leeds and, and try and get the three points and show that you're not just a one-man team? I'm not saying you are, but it will sort of shut people up who don't know much about Brentford. Yeah, with Ivan Tony not available this weekend... Um, due to the COVID, uh, it did force us against Leeds to uh, change our tactics a little bit and maybe just play with uh, Brian up front with um, quicker players coming up uh, to support him. Um, and I, I can see that that's the way it will be on Friday night. Uh, probably play again with Brian up front and uh, maybe Whistler coming in. I don't think Fours is going to play. Um, it's just a Something nagging in my the back of my mind about Force. He, he, he's not. I don't think developed as much as they they had hoped. Um, but you know, we'll see. 
And obviously with Tony uh, out and Canos, who played well against Leeds, fair play to him, unable to play due to yellow cards, it, it, it surely should be Wizzer and Brian up front, if that is the case. Are you excited to see how these two play together? Um, or do you think he might sprung a surprise and put fours up there with one of them? But surely it should be time for Wizzer to get his first start. Surely. What do you think? Yeah, as I uh, said just a couple of seconds ago, I, I agree with you. I think Wizzer should start. Um, his pace is a, an asset to the team. Uh, and I, I don't think that uh, Forza's quite got that. Uh, Canos is just so annoying. I agree, he did, he played exceptionally well in the second half. And so did uh, Brian, to be fair. Um, we started well enough in the first half, uh, first 20 minutes, but we quickly ran out of steam. Um, and that's the, that was the cause of us having to... Uh, withstand a lot of pressure from Leeds going uh, uh, from on from when they scored their goal after about 22 minutes the second part of the first half we were literally it was back to the wall um, yeah Canos like I said he's, he's frustrating his yellow card tally is ridiculous because most of his yellow cards have come from just uh, sheer petulance he got a, a yellow card on Sunday just for kicking the ball away you know and that's ridiculous. You, you don't do that. You know that's going to cost you a yellow card and it's costing him a match. Perhaps he's got some Christmas shopping to do. And finally, Doug, um, how do you think this game's going to play out? Um, where is a key, one key battle for you? Uh, where do you think the game will be won and lost on both sides? And what do you think the scoreline will be? Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, if you offer me a two-all draw now, I'll take that all day long. Um, the key battles will be uh, controlling their pace because they, they do they've got some quick players and that uh, Dennis is undoubtedly quite a live wire um, he travelled Manchester City numerous times uh, on um, uh, when was it uh, Sunday Sunday was it Sunday or Saturday evening Saturday evening it must have been um, yeah if we can uh, control their, their pace and uh, get a grip with midfield feed our um, forwards at quicker running forwards uh, with Brian and Wisser. Maybe we could snatch a win, but yeah, as I said, give us a two-all draw. I'll take it now. Thanks, Doug. Appreciate you coming back on. Always good to hear from you. Uh, I think you're very correct on your score prediction. I think a draw would be possibly what you look for here. I think Watford are very underrated. They've surprised me, even without Saar. Uh, I think a uh, majority of real fans like yourself, Jay and Reese, would probably say the same. But again, thanks again for coming on. And that's all for now, guys. Uh, we'll see you on the next video.